what's the best way that you could try and just totally botch a run and just make it so that you've really, really humiliated yourself in front of an audience? And I said, well, there is this one run, uh, Shantae Risky's Revenge, any percent. Uh, we, uh, we kind of affectionately refer to it in the community as FPBS, which stands for Frame Perfect Cattle Rancher, uh, which you'll see why that is real soon. So we are pretty much ready. Uh, the moment that I get told we're good to go, I can get started. I'm waiting for the thumbs up from the control room. We have, oh, we have like five thumbs up. Yeah, you're good to go. Okay, so that's that's good, right? Like we can go? Yeah, yeah, whenever you, just give us a countdown so they can All make sure right. they hit the timer thing. Three, two, one, go. All right, so to, at the very beginning, there's an RNG grind if you're actually going for PB or world record attempts, which is real great. We're not gonna worry about it. If we get 40 gems before the big gem pickup, that's real good. Um, if we don't, we're just gonna continue and it's gonna be real fun. Oh, I should also mention, uh, you're gonna see me backdash a lot. Uh, this game loves to eat your backdashes, but backdashes are substantially faster than regular movement. It's great that way. I feel like that's just a theme in speedrunning is backwards movement is, is always faster. As long as you can't see where you're going, you're going fast. All right, well, we are way, way broke this run. That's fine. Was a pause. Yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, Tina, you know how I feel about those words. They, that they help you not worry? I give up. <laughs> All right, so uh, here's our uncle. He found a lamp. That's kind of cool. So where does this fall in the Shantae timeline? Uh, this is the second game. Gotcha. So this was released for the DS as DSiWare. Um, and it was the follow-up to the Game Boy Color game. So we're gonna, coming up, have just a, a real friendly chat with, um, with, with Risky Boots and her pirate ship, Tinkertub. I have questions. You have a question. You yeah, have a question, why does this, why is, why does it have feet? Why does it have a mouth? Why does it have eyes? I don't understand the question. Why wouldn't it? Oh, good. All right, so one of the most important tricks in the game doesn't save any time, but it's very important. We just got a Super Saiyan jump. I was like, it looks like a, looks like a T-pose. It's frame perfect, so you know it's important. I mean, it's the name of the game, isn't it? That's right. If we can get three, I'll be real happy. Hey, we got three. Are you All right, this is a good run. Are you real happy then? I am. I'm very happy. I am just thrilled right now. Shantae's job is being the guardian of the city. Um, she just got shot with a cannonball, which means that she failed and she's fired. That is the actual plot of the game. I mean, I, I can see the logic there. Can you? It's not very good logic, but I can see it. Okay, I, I get it. You can see the logic that that a logic exists, got yeah, it? Yeah, okay. there, there is a logic to this. I don't necessarily agree with it, and I don't think it follows the rules of like proper logic, but it, it exists. All right, so now we're just, we're gonna make our way to uh, the next area. We're gonna dance through the danger. We're gonna talk to this warp squid. So 
that unmakes that we have warp squids, heart squids, and yep. the Baron squid. Squid Baron. And Squid Baron, yeah. yeah. We'll see him pretty soon here. Was Squid Baron in the Game Boy Color game? No, this is Squid Baron's first game. Ooh. Good for him. All right, so we are going to rescue Wobble Bell. Wobble Bell was about to be eaten for dinner. It's the doggy. And uh, then uh, we're, we're looking for uh, where Risky Boots is gone. So, um, so Roddy Tops there has helped us out. She looked up some information on the web. Dang it. Ah, uh, that's a good pun. I can't deny that. We are going to be on our way. We're going to go... Uh, previously, we were supposed to have uh, gone the other way first and find out that, hey, Wobble Bell's been kidnapped, and uh, if we can help get Wobble Bell back to, uh, back to its owner, that maybe we can get a tasty meal. We're just going to do those things out of order a little bit. We're going to go get a tasty meal. It's going to be very nice. Oh, tasty meal sounds good. What point in the run does it start becoming frame perfect cattle ranching? You'll know. Okay. I, I will make sure that uh, that everybody knows. All right. So we gave the puppy. The puppy is home. Yay! So you remember how the puppy was in the village of lost souls um, in the credits in the previous run that you saw me do of this uh, series? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm. Is that the end? Ah! Yeah, that wasn't okay. Yeah, it was. Notice, Wobble Bell had a hundred gems. That's a hundred monies. That's a lot of money. How often do you see a cute little puppy just walking around with a hundred monies for no reason? Wobble Bell is a thief. I'm still in shock, I'm sorry. <laughs> For everyone in chat who might think that that was a scripted reaction, no, I actually had no idea that was about to happen. Hey, Squid Baron. So Squid Baron just, uh, just ate a tasty meal and refused to pay for his delivery. Oh. So uh, we're going to go teach Squid Baron a lesson by get... never seeing him again. So the reason that we really want 50 gems uh, at the start of this run is because we would then be able to purchase Pike Ball, which is, in this game, it's a spell. In the other run that you saw, it was an item. And that just lets us go through this area faster. But instead, you're going to get to watch me do this the hard way, which, let's be real, I think that's what most people want anyway. They want to see speedrunners do the hard thing. Yeah. More impressive that way. That's what I'm told. Do we have time for a brief donation before we start getting into crazy territory? I would love to hear one. Cool. We have $10 from Top Cop, who says, looking forward to the Little Gaia 2 run. Cheers to all the runners. And for Top Cop, I just got a thumbs up from the Little Gaia 2 runner. So your donation was appreciated. Oh, 
was a very interesting dying animation on that red enemy. Yeah, yeah, those knights are, are pretty cool. They kind they, of uh, fall forward. <laughs> yeah, they they have a very elaborate death animation. I feel like these platforms are a safety hazard. They don't seem to have any sort of actual mounting mechanism keeping them to whatever part of the environment they're supposed to be attached to. Yeah, you know, I have been previously telling you not to worry about things a lot, but that's one that you can worry about. You have my permission. Hey, I can worry about a thing. I'm so happy. It's all I've ever wanted for the past, like, two hours. Well, good news. Worry no more. You may worry. I mean, like, there's not even any, like, handrail. This, these cannot no, be OSHA that, Well, that's how you know that somebody's evil. Villains never have handrails on their stairs or other mechanisms. That's just how you know it. It, all villains are just, their layers are full of OSHA violations. That's right. So this is a little puzzle. You're supposed to figure out that you can break some of these blocks. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was very, very swag backdash. Not just sweat, it saves time. These orcs are jerks. They can fly, so they're basically birds. Yeah, you're not wrong. That, that track. Yeah. All right, so we are going to go get our first and only transformation of this run. Uh, we're going to be able to turn it into a cute little monkey that can climb on walls. I like monkeys. I don't really have much else to say besides that. Speaking of the old man there, does this game have any forced saves? Uh, right at the very beginning, you saw me go and oh. save. That was the one forced save this run. Okay. That's, that's, that's kind of a Shantae staple is you're going you're gonna to save right at the very beginning, whether you like it or not. I, mean, I can think of worse things, so... Adorable. It is. It's very, very cute. Very cute. We were going to go teach Squid Baron a lesson. Uh, yeah, but you said we weren't going to see him again. Yep, we're not going to. Okay. You got off easy this time, Squid Baron. Get out of my way. There we go. I love the fact that, uh, that I was positioned optimally to take damage from a spider bullet there. <laughs> Completely intentional, Tina. Just play it off that way. Oh yeah, totally. That was definitely intentional.
So we're going to pick up a heart container. Uh, if you're doing PB attempts, you definitely will not. But if you're doing a marathon run and you think, hey, maybe it would be kind of cool if maybe I finish this run, then pick up a heart container. It's not a bad idea. All right, so now I'm going to buy a fireball and a million potions. Sounds like you're going to be taking a lot of damage. Yep. That's the plan. And also because, as previously mentioned, I'm a safe kid. And the Frame Perfect Cattle Rancher part of the run is coming up. Ooh. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just... Just going to do, do a quick save. Yeah, yeah just, just going to do a save. I can have little a save as a treat. An intentional fireball. All right. So coming up, I am going to have to position myself pixel perfect uh, on a wall, and then I will use a fireball to push me one pixel per uh, one pixel further into the wall. At which point, not before I take a really unfortunate uh, fall. Anyway, one pixel further into the wall, which causes me to clip into the wall at which point I will have a one-frame window to do a jump. Uh, using the fireball itself is a pixel-perfect move, uh, or is a frame-perfect move. The double jump is frame-perfect. Um, anytime you see the smoke, uh, that means that I got the first frame-perfect move. If I, didn't, if I didn't jump, I didn't get the second one. aren't over yet. Actually getting up there is its own thing. Very similar to like a wall jump in Super Mario World. Yep. But with more fireballs. Yeah, there are more fireballs. So before the run, I did see a bunch of people mentioning that they had recently played through this game. And they're probably thinking, you're about to skip a lot of the uh, the content in this game. You're right, but not for the reason that you think. I can now see why this game has the acronym it does. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is... It's real fun. Um... What's really neat about this run is that other than glitchless, all of these, uh, all of the categories of this game involve really, really finicky frame perfect tricks. Thanks mostly to uh, one member of the community called Ezco, who's just very good at finding ways to make us sad. Here, have a time save. Also, it's like multiple frame perfect tricks. Have fun. Yep. Feels like you weren't anticipating actually getting it on that one. I was, but the controller decided that eating an input would be fun. Oh, yeah. Definitely know that life. So, credit where it's due. 
got into this run because of Toucan Sham, who uh, recent or not recently, a while back, ran this at a GDQ. Uh, got this jump like fourth try, which is ridiculous. Because even if you're well practiced, you know, this is two frame perfect tricks in a row. I have a donation if we have a bit of a moment. I would love to hear a donation right now. <laughs> we have $18 from Will It Work, who says, thanks for a great marathon. I thought it was appropriate. Thank you for the kind donation. So that jump is a two or three frame window. I forget which. Uh, so lots of super precise stuff. Oh, hey, you got that. Like, you got the, the fireball jump pretty quickly that time. Yeah. Unfortunately, this game uh, doesn't give you credit until you get all of them in a row. Yep. So are you looking like, so for the fireball jump, are you looking for a particular vertical pixel or a particular horizontal pixel? Uh, it happens on a 16 pixel boundary. frame-perfect trick pretty consistently, which is nice. Uh, getting both, though, would be even better. That second one is just real tough to get. All right, well, we've got two more potions worth, and then we can, if I don't get this, we can hand it over to Rhea. I would love to show everybody the second frame perfect, uh, frame perfect part of the run. As long as we can get this jump to happen, it's pretty wild. Oh. All right, so um, the game just happened at you real fast here. Uh, anybody who has played through this game probably recognizes this room as one of the last rooms in the game. The last room in the game, other than the boss fight. All right, are we gonna get an explanation as to what happened or am I just not gonna worry about it? Don't worry about it. Okay. All right, so what happened there was uh, I forced, I don't wanna be non, I keep on here right yet. I forced Shantae to be uh, use our first potion. I forced Shantae to be standing in a spot where she's not allowed to stand, uh, which caused her to zip to the last area of the game, at which point I need to use audio cues to navigate to the final doorway, to the last save area, to the last room of the game, or now I get to fight the final boss. Um, she's taking a bunch of stuff you don't have. Say again. It looks like she's just taking a bunch of stuff from you that you don't actually have. Oh yeah, don't worry about it. Those are magic seals. Um, I don't have them because she took them. Also, I never collected them. Mm, gotcha. 
All right, so this is Tinker Tub. Tinker Tub can either give us an anchor like we just got, or a barrel that we can blow up. The Barrels are good. Be, yeah. Anchors are bad. Yeah, the second one seemed better than the first. Are you trying to get the frame perfect jump off the bounce? Yeah. For fun. Okay. Just please enjoy the animation and the music. Everything about this fight is wonderful, except for the fact that it's pure RNG. All right, so while this last cycle goes, I'm going to explain the final boss fight. We're gonna be fighting Nega Shante, palette swap version, or not palette, yeah, palette swap version of us. Um, so Nega Shante uh, is real annoying and you really wanna to have tons of powerful magic to fight her. I don't have any of that. So instead, I am going to have to deal damage to Nega Shante on the exact same frame that I take damage, uh, which ends the game. I'm not gonna be able to tell you when time is coming up. Uh, time happens when black bars ha uh, show up on stream. This just sounds like the Dracula fight in Castlevania. It's great. It's so good. It's super fun. All right, so that's that's the note to the person in the control room, just to be ready for time sometime soon. Yes, be ready for time. It'll happen or not. It is frame perfect. Nega Shante. Oh, it's a, it's a Nega monkey? Aww. Oh yeah, she has all of the transformations that you were supposed to have. There we go. Oh, it's the time, yep. Yeah. Yep. You did it! So, uh, that was Risky's Revenge. Um, probably a little bit shorter than most people who've played through this game casually have experienced it. I skipped a little bit of the content. Sorry about that. Just a little bit. Yep. But I think that we are probably really close to being ready to have the next run come up now. I think we are... What was the time, by the way? Uh, 27.37. Fair enough. Yeah, that's that's about right with how bad that uh, double jump went. Okay. Yeah, we are uh, just about ready as far as I'm aware. So uh, thank you, Tina, for the third run of the evening. Thank you again for letting me be here with you. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Hey, thank you for having me. I am super excited for the rest of the marathon. Everyone, get excited about GDQ. Get excited about the Malala Fund. Absolutely. Thanks again, Tina. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope you all enjoyed those wonderful runs by uh, the great Tina Hacks, a uh, good friend of mine and wonderful speedrunner. Um, we have a $10 donation from Anonymous with no comment, uh, but thank you anyway. Like, that's, you don't have to say something. You don't have to tell us who you are. Any money you're putting towards the Malala Fund is going to a great cause. So we really, really appreciate it. All right, and while we are finishing the last touches on the setup for our Legend of the Gaia 2 run, I am going to send us over to a quick Twitch ad. See you on the other side.
All right, we are back, and we are getting the final touches set up on our Lagaya 2 Dual Saga run. Uh, I believe I'm going to be handing over the mic to Sam Without a Plan shortly. I'm just waiting for that cue. But before I do that, I do want to just remind everyone about the shirts that the Yeti is selling. So $5 of every shirt sold, uh, every Frost Fatale shirt sold through the Yeti will be going towards Malala Fund. So if you want to get your own Frost Fatale shirts, type exclamation point Yeti in the chat or visit theyeti.com. They're adorable, amazing. I bought two there, yes, get a shirt if you want a shirt. If you like shirts, shirts. All right, so my time tonight has come to an end. I will be back later today, this evening, something. I'm doing a couple of runs soon, uh, and and then depending on the outcome of the bid war for learning with Liz, you might see me sooner. So if you want to see me sooner, donate towards that. But I'm going to hand it over to Sam without a plan. Hello, Sam. Hello everyone, my name is Sam Without a Plan and I'll be your host for the next roughly six hours for the Lagaya 2 Dual Saga Run, run by Rhea Skies. So I hope everybody is doing great. 